security comes first. But it's clearly more nuanced than that. We, we talk about here like at Cisco Live and especially the DevNet zone, um, the concept of security is just such a broad topic. Um, and we've been spending a lot of time at this Cisco Live especially talking about much more nuanced things including um, application-centric security because it's not something that Cisco historically has talked a lot about, but there is so much that needs to be thought about in that realm. And in talking to others, uh, I've learned, we've, we spend a lot of time thinking about the ideas of products like Panoptica, CNAP, and what those things bring in, but it's really great to have you here because I'd love to talk a little bit more about why we came as Cisco, that came to the decision that we should really get into this, this place. So maybe you can tell us a bit about in the Panoptica world or just CNAP and, and broad, why Cisco really wants to get into application-centric security? Sure, um, so, uh, you know, our customers have been demanding, so we obviously are driven by customers, so let's just start first that, there. And Cisco has uh, many different products, and what we've been hearing constantly from the customer is that we need security. And uh, if you look at it, uh, where do you start the security? You are worried about the application. Now, application has multiple layers. It has an infrastructure layer, an app layer, a database layer, and the APIs layers. So you have to start somewhere. And you know, different companies uh, start in different places. Uh, we started with, uh, uh, we had Kubernetes in our DNA, container in our DNA. So we started with uh, application and container security, but obviously that's just doing compute. And you, what about the other layers? Mm -hmm. And so in that context, we are expanding there. We were always in multi-cloud, so that context was uh, satisfied. So this is how we started the journey. That's really cool. I, you know, it's interesting, and I, I really like the way that you phrase this. And other folks I've talked to have been phrasing this as well. And I think it's a, it's a bit of a mindset, mindset shift for us, which is, it's not so much that, in the past I think people have thought of Cisco as whenever we've made different types of products, we want to hit everything. We want to, we want to cover all of the things for people. But the way you just said that is, we have to start someplace. So let's pick a place to start. And it's not so much, is that right, is that wrong? It's, we've got to, we've got to pick something, so let's start here and focus on those and help try to solve for problems where we can. I think that's, that is a really interesting shift in perspective for Cisco as a company overall, and then specifically within um, groups like Panoptica and uh, now Outshift, is thinking about how do we deliver solutions for our community, our customers, or partners that say, you know what, we've heard you, we're going to focus on this one thing. That not be, may not be what everybody needs right now, but we've, we've got to start somewhere. I really like that idea. Yes, yeah, it's like a market product fit. So we have a core competency in this. We know that there is a sliver of market that uh, is interested in it. And then we, uh, then we expand, and that's exactly what we have done. And we are emerging technology and incubation units, so we love to expand <laughs> the moment we uh, enter in. That's awesome. Yeah. I, you know, I find it, uh, I love the, hearing the term, I love thinking of the term as almost platform. You know, you hear about, from the, the gardeners and foresters out there, you hear of things like CNAP, this big yes. acronym that has yeah. a lot of things in the stack, and then you kind of rationalize that a bit with what Cisco delivers in a product like Panoptica as an example. Um, can you talk a bit about why, like you said, we're picking one thing first, but how something like Panoptica fits within the concepts of CNAP and how Cisco wants to approach like supporting application delivery and security for customers? Yeah, that's a very good question because uh, although how the way we started was a point solution and everybody else in the industry has point solution, but if uh, the, because the application stack is so huge, if you start having point solutions, then you have just like multiple uh, products which don't talk to each other and there are no common insights, so you're missing out a lot. And that's how Gartner came up with the world uh, CNAP and this is exactly how we look at we have this entire stack covered uh, now, uh, uh, and we we have evolved. Like uh, uh, any product, a good product would have three things. One would be the uh, the phase where it provides you visibility, and it would be if you have a visibility across the entire stack, which is where we have evolved into. Then we can give you a richer correlation, which application and which API applications. So we are able to discover, oh, th these APIs belong to this application, mm -hmm. and it is running on this infrastructure, and it is talking to this database. If we know all of that, then we can tell you end to end what really matters to you most, mm -hmm. and we are able to like map the entire topology for you. The second part, of course, is to prioritize what you should fix first, because once you start having the stack, uh, the customers keep talking to me about notification fatigue. You know, I mean, right. um, I want to just like, 
if you give them too much notification and every layer of the stack says this is urgent, how do you decide what to do? If everything <laughs> says it's urgent, nothing's <laughs> urgent. Exactly, right. exactly. And so, so that's where uh, the, we have taken it to the level of attack paths, which is we fi first we figure out how things are connected. And then we, we have a very rich set of attack, uh, attack vector, uh, paths, which we have uh, not just what in industry says, but we have also through our own intelligence and threat intelligence, we expanded that set. So we know the moment attacks happen, we have expanded our attack path. And now, now looking at that and what customer signals are coming in, we tie and see which of the end-to-end -end path is possible. And then based on the risk probability, bubble it to the customer and say, hey, given your environment, this is what you should focus on first, and then second, so that way you're not just bogged down in all these notifications. And then of course the third part is the remediation, which also we have evolved so that you know um, things can get more and more automated, and yet this is the trend today with AI and everything, so yes. <laughs> you know what, you've touched on so many different conjoining subjects that I've been hearing this entire week at Cisco Live, yes. is visibility, or visibility which leads to observability, yes. and then to your point, you can have all the information in the world, but especially in the world of security, more data oftentimes is less helpful because <laughs> exactly. you get the notification fatigue, where do you look? You can have all these data points in the world, but trying to <laughs> take all this abstract information and stitch it together, how do you know where to start looking? Exactly. And I, I, it comes back to the concepts around XDR and detection, response, and being able to say, you know what, let's pick some use cases or some attack paths that we know are common and we can, do, we can figure them out and tell you these are likely places to look so you have a place to start looking rather than saying, let's look at all the information we have and say, what's our problem? And you as a person have to try to use your knowledge to figure that out. You now have, we're going to tell you some things we know for a fact are coming and then you can look at the side. Now you mentioned AI a second ago and I know, you know there's a whole conversation we could have around that, but how is the ideas and the, what we're seeing around generative AI, how is that either playing a role in both the positive side of app, to app development and security, how is it playing to sort of the darker side of this? Uh, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very good question. So there are like uh, two types of AI. One is, I mean now, I, I hate to even say it, it's traditional AI, which uh, you can say predictive AI. <laughs> right. And then the second one is the generative AI. And uh, with generative AI, Microsoft has coined this world called co-pilots. Right, so that means that they can help you with some task along the way. Mm -hmm. And so with, uh, so if you look at start, if you start with generative AI, different phases of this uh, Panoptica product or any product for that matter, the co-pilots can have help in different journey. So for example, uh, whether you're in the CI CD phase, you can auto-generate your scripts, you can auto-generate uh, your test tools through, through a generative AI process. When you are in your runtime phase, uh, there are many things you can do. For example, if you wanted to detect sensitive data flowing through an API, uh, the, that would be a predictive AI thing. But what the generative AI can then do is then, given that you found some sensitive data, now it can auto-generate uh, remediation steps for you so that, uh, so, that it, uh, so that you can remediate faster. And then um, you touched upon, ultimately, uh, we do attack paths, but then you can also do, if the incident happens, and you can do detection and response, in which case the generative AI can answer queries for you, or show me what were the steps in the, uh, 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 the steps in these uh, detection, uh, how did you figure out the forensic investigation, and what, uh, how you can look at it. So these are the things that uh, the generative AI can help you with. It's, yeah. it's fantastic to hear that, because it's, it really, I think examples like you just gave, make generative AI, you know, you may say chat GPT out there, an individual user, person like myself could just go play with it. Th what you described makes that practical for a business setting. That's an example of how you take, maybe not chat GPT, but a, some form of generative AI, AI that can be interacted with by a person to simplify the things that you're describing yes. so that we can, we can really make automation even more simple for people to implement and understand that yes. don't require always having to write the code behind it. So there's, it sounds like there's so much more we could be talking about with this. Thank you for being here, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, uh, this was fun. Thank you for uh, taking time to chat with me. Absolutely. Yeah.